Hi everyone, I'm Shekun Adebayo. I'm the lead maintainer and creator of Chakra UI. And in this talk, I'm going to show you how to build an accessible slider component with state machines and state chart. My hope is I'm able to explain these concepts in a way that's approachable and easy for you to understand. Let's dive in. A slider component, just like we know, is basically a custom version of the input type equals range. In this talk, we're going to focus on four key areas. First one is to make sure the slider component works with pointer interactions, like the mouse or the stylus. The second one is to make sure that the slider component works with keyboard inputs like the arrow left, arrow right, home key, and key uh, that just changes the value as you press the keyboard. And the third one is to make sure we attach the proper area attributes to the component. And if we have some time, I can go through how to add labels to the slider component and to make sure the slider works within forms. Before we go ahead to talk about the slider, it's always a good idea to understand the different parts of a slider component just to help with terminologies and also help you understand which part I'm referring to. The first part I'm going to talk about is the slider track. This track represents the full range of the value from its mean to its max value. And the thumb represents the current state or the current value of the slider, and it also serves as the control to scrub or change the value of the slider component. The range is basically a visual indicator that shows you what the value is at any point in time relative to the full length, which is the maximum value. With state machines and state charts, it's really important to understand the different states the component could be in, so it's really easy to model the logic or draw a very visual flowchart to see the different state and how you transition between them. The data component has three different states. It has the idle state, which means no interaction is happening on the slider component, it's basically idle. We have the focus state, which means when you press the tab key to control or set focus on the slider component, that's basically what we refer to as the focus state. And the dragon state, which just means when you put your pointer anywhere along the slider track and you just scrub the value through by moving your mouse or moving your pointer to change the values rapidly. That is the dragon state. And I mention these states because it's going to be a very interesting anchor around all the entire talk I'm going to give in today. So we're going to look at the state charts and how and, and how you can send events within the state machine and what events you can send. The first one is when we're in the idle state, uh, we can pointer down, which means all anywhere along the slider track, just put the pointer down there. And what we're going to do, as we know, with input type equals range, is going to set the value of the slider to match that point where you sort of put your mouse down. And the second one is the focus, which means I can press the tab key to set focus on the tab. These are the two events you can send when the slider is in the idle state. When the slider is in the focus state, which means either when you use your tab key, uh, you can send a couple of events. And one of them is uh, you can perform arrow left or arrow right, which allows you to increment or decrement the value depending on what is pressed. You can also press the home and end keys to set the value to the minimum value or to set the value to the maximum value. Another interesting thing you could do is to blur, which means because the slider thumb has focus, you can click anywhere outside the page to blur, or basically we call it click outside the component to reset it back to the idle state. Or you could also pointer down, which means you could uh, put your pointer down on any point along the track and just start dragging, which takes the slider into the dragging state. In the dragon state, you can scrub along the track just to change the value rapidly to the left or to the right, which increments or decrements the value. Or you can pointer up, which means you release your pointer and you're done with the dragon session and that takes the machine back to the focus state. Now, all of the different things I've showed you right now can be represented in a flow chart or basically a state chart so you can understand the different states and the transitions between them. So the states are represented with boxes. We have the idle state, the focus state, and the dragging state. And the transition, the transition between them are modeled with arrows. Here you can see the yellow arrows that indicates the blur, the tab, and all the different events we could send. Within a state chart, when you transition between states, you are able to modify an object called context. 
This context is an extended piece of information that is very specific to the machine itself that you can change along as you change between states. For a slider compo component, you'd expect that it has minimum value, maximum value, whether the slider component is disabled or not, and other possible things that would be helpful to change the behavior of the slider component. And here, as described, you see that we are going to assume that the slider component starts with the idle state. That's what I'm showing with the asterisk initial right there. To model this logic or this flowchart I've shown you so far, I'm going to be using the Exit library. I think Exit is an awesome library and it helps me use the object representation to describe the different state the machine could be in and the transitions between them. The create machine function that you see in here is a function from Exit itself. And that just helps me define the ID of that machine, which slider component, the context object, which would include the minimum value, the maximum value, the current value of the slider, whether the slider is disabled or and other, other value values that I could use within the context to change the machine's behavior. As we described earlier, as we saw in the previous diagram, the initial state is idle. And then we can also define the different states the machine could be in and the events that could be sent. Just to help you get a quick idea, uh, we have three different states as we saw, idle, focus, and dragon. Exit has a notion of a nested on key, which is used to describe all of the different events that can be sent to the machine and how the machine should interact or respond to these events. And in different states as well, in each state, you're able to specify a, a key called entry and exit, which helps you to define the actions that are going to be run when you enter a specific state or when you leave a specific state. The last one I'm going to show you is called Invoke. Invoke is pretty interesting because what it does is to help you to define within the context of this talk, it's going to help you define event listeners or long running activities that your machine needs to listen to while it's in that state. For the purpose of this talk, we're going to be using Invoke to define or to listen to the pointer move event when it's in a dragon state. As I showed you in the diagram, we're going to try to see what the object representation of this logic looks like. In the idle state, as we saw earlier, you could send a pointer down event, which means the user puts the pointer down on any point along the slider. And what we are trying to see with this object that says target is we want to send the machine to the dragon state. And the actions we want to run when that happens is we want to set the value for that point. Basically, it means Wherever the pointer is and I put my mouse down and I put my mouse down there, set the value of the pointer to be that point's value, which is what we're going to implement later on. And the other thing we want to use is the, when, when you hit the tab key, which sends the focus event, we want to say, send this letter to the focus state, basically. In the focus state, we can also see something interesting is happening here. On entry, we say when we enter into the focus state, we want to make sure the thumb has focus. So basically, the thumb usually would have a tap index of zero, and we just want to call the focus method to make sure that it always retains focus when it's in the focus state. And then the events we're going to send to this machine are pointer down, which means I put my pointer anywhere along the track again, and I'm going to set the value for that, for that point in the event, which is the actions I'm going to run there. And I could also send a series of events for the keyboard navigation, which is pointer left, pointer right, home and end keys. And that would basically increment the value, decrement the value, or set the value to mean in event of home, or set the value to max in event of end. I can also decide to click outside, which is basically because this slider has focus, I can click anywhere outside the page to say to indicate that I'm done interacting with the slider. And that is basically what I refer to as the click outside or the blur event handler. In this case, we tell the machine to go to the idle target, which means go to the idle state. In the dragon state, we see that we can, because we already pointer down on, along the track and we sort of scrub along the mouse with the mouse or with the pointer, we're just going to call this function called focus thumb, which is basically to ensure that the slider thumb has focus all through as you scrub through the slider. And we invoke a listener called track pointer move, which is going to help us attach listeners to the body of the document and make sure we actually set the value as you scrub through in there. And that's why we have the set value event within the on key. 
And while I'm dragging, you can definitely send an event called pointer up, which just indicates that you're done scrubbing and you want to go back to the focus state. Now we've seen all the different ways to describe the interactions and the states within a slider component. And then the next thing comes, how do we take this logic and this piece of state and bind that to the DOM? And what I mean by the DOM is, how do we define the attributes? How do we define the events? How do we define the area attributes and properties that should go onto these elements, all the different parts of the slider component? To solve this problem, we have to do two things. Um, the first one is to consume the, the slider machine. So here we have an import use machine from exit react. This is a hook, a react binding that helps us consume the slider state machine within the react framework. When we invoke this function or this hook, it gives us access to the state and the send. The state is, a is the current representation of the slider machine and it includes a couple of utilities and especially it tells us what state the machine is and what the context value is at that point in time. The send function basically works like the dispatch when you're using a reducer and use reducer hook in React. It just helps you send signals or send or dispatch events to the machine. Remember early on, we looked at the on key and all of the different events. So the send function just helps you literally dispatch this event to the machine. On the right side, we, we are able to connect the machine to the DOM itself. So what it says is it takes the output from use machine hook in X state, the state and the send, and it's able to return back to me very useful information I could use when I want to render my UI. So here in this example, we're checking if the state matches focus, which means if the machine is in the focus state, uh, we're assigning that to its focus property. And if the machine is in a dragon state, we're assigning that to its dragon. But these are very useful booleans you could use to uh, conditionally render any element or just manipulate the UI uh, the way that's designed. And one more thing you can see here is prop getters, basically, or properties that sort of read, a bunch of properties that rely, that translates to DOM attributes. Here you can see the thumb props. The thumb props basically returns all of the properties you need to spread onto the thumb element to make sure that it's properly accessible and it works correctly with the keyboard and pointer and as described in the Y area specification. So you can see here, we give the role equals slider, we append area disabled, which sort of equal to the context that is disabled. And we have area label, we have value max, value mean, value now, the tab index property, and all of the different properties to make sure that the slider component works correctly in, in the context of React. And because this is a pure function, this can be used anywhere else, not just in React, which is what I'm pretty excited about. We've looked at all of the different ways to get the logic of the slider component into the page and translate that to DOM attributes. We're going to go over the steps again to review the entire step. The first one is to import the slider machine and grab the use machine hook from XState React. That is going to give us access to the current state of the machine and the send function which we use to dispatch events. Next, we're going to translate the state and the send that comes from the XState machine uh, to DOM attributes and very useful state properties that we can use to render our UI. So in this example, you see we have the track props, the range props, the thumb props, and if you have to use it in the form, we also want to return the input props. Three, we want to render the UI. So which means I want to render the HTML structure to make sure that it's very semantic and it's well structured to make sure the styles work correctly. And here I've given everything a class name just to show you how we can style this and make sure that it's very consistent and looks like a style element. And you can see that based on the previous slide, I showed you we can connect, translate the state and send from the slider to get properties. And here when I render the component, I just spread the attributes onto the element. This makes me clearly separate the logic of the components from the rendering of the component and the styling of the component, which is a great way to model UI components. I'm going to show you a demo of what this looks like in Code Sandbox. Here in Code Sandbox, we have the slider component set up, and I've also tried to visualize the state of the machine here in this pretty JSON object. In JSON object, it shows you the value key, which represents the current state of the machine. It shows the context, which is basically all of the different extended state information that I want to change as I transition between states. 
The next one is the event, which I think you can keep an eye on because it just represents the events that have been sent to the machine using the send function. And the next events key just shows you what events the machine could respond to. Because, of, because this is built using a state machine, we can ensure and we can make sure that the machine only responds to specific events. This makes it very easy to understand the flow and the logic of a component and even debug the component or test the component. So to start, I'm gonna try with the, I'm gonna start with the pointer events, which means I'm gonna take my mouse towards the slider track, click anywhere along the slider track and sort of drag the values. Now while I do this, you can you can see that the, the, the machine is currently in the dragging state. The context value changes as I drag along because I'm setting the values correctly. And you can see the event being sent is called set value, which is what is sent from the invoke definition I showed earlier. And the next event the machine can listen to is the pointer up event. So I'm gonna release my mouse now to just like get out of this state. And when that is done, you see that the machine is now in the focus state and the event that I sent earlier was pointer up. And I can now send a couple of events to the machine. Let's check the keyboard events. So I'm gonna use the arrow left and arrow right to change the values. And you can see that the value changes based on direction uh, or, or all the arrow, arrows that I press. The next thing I can do is to use the home and the end keys, as you can see there, to set the value to the minimum or the maximum value of the slider. And I can hold the shift key with arrow left as well to increment the value at much greater steps, in this, in this case, 10 times the step defined in the context. That makes it easy to just get through the value and scrub through or speak a specific value within range a lot faster. Now, these are the different ideas or different concepts within a state machine. And I hope this is very useful and you find it very valuable to learn about how to build accessible components with state machines. The thing I'm most excited about is the fact that you can take these machines and use them in, not just in React, but in Vue, in Svelte, and even in SolidJS. I'm really excited about this idea and I'm really excited about the future of building accessible components. Thank you so much for watching my talk. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter, send me an email, or check my GitHub account as well. Have a great next year's conference. I'm so excited to be here.